Well, good morning, everyone. It's glad to see you. I have 10 o'clock. It's a pleasure to, to welcome you. It's want to be a part of our county government. Appreciate your interest. At this time, I will call the October 24th Baldwin County Board Commissioner's work session to order. And it's um, a privilege to welcome our elected officials, which would be Sheriff Gary Gulledge and District Attorney Dick Donovan. Uh, but all of you are special guests for us, and we're glad to have you here. If uh, Michael Holmes bring the list forward, turn off your uh, phones, please. And it is indeed a pleasure to have Pastor Johnny Nix from Pickett's Mill Baptist Church. Uh, fairly new to our county and new to Pickett's Mill, and just a pleasure to have him here to bring us our invocation and lead us in the uh, pledge of the flag. Thank you, Johnny. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Father, as we come to you today, we thank you for your many blessings upon our great nation. Thank you, dear Father, for its leaders, and we pray for them today. And then, dear Father, our state, this great state of Georgia, we pray for its leaders as they lead us today. And then locally, we pray for our county and those who serve our county and its leaders. Dear Father, we ask your blessings upon Paulding County and the business would be transacted today. Dear Father, we pray that this place would be a great place, not only to raise a family, but to live. Dear Father, we pray for your blessings upon our county and Lord, your watch care over our citizens. Dear Father, we ask today that you would give guidance and counsel. And dear Father, I pray that you would lead each one of us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 May I direct your attention to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks again, Pastor Dick. The minutes of our October 10th, 2017 uh, work session, uh, along with the regular board meeting minutes, are available for review. This is a great time of year to uh, go to the Silver Comet, uh, Fall so beautiful, and our positively falling today is uh, a little clip on that. So let's enjoy that together. I think they had that webcam, webcam on uh, Commissioner Crow's helmet. Is that true? <laughs> it's uh, always a pleasure to have uh, District Attorney Dick Donovan with us, and especially today because he has a word of appreciation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
about the way I've written almost all the Silver Comet. I wrote it actually before it was made. Uh, when they first pulled up the tracks, uh, we uh, from our church rode from Hiram uh, as far as we could go. Uh, and after it was paid, we've ridden every inch of it from Nickajack almost to the end. But uh, one Sunday, my wife, the major, and I went to Cedar Town to go down the mountain. We figured we, that was the only part we hadn't done. So we started out in Cedar Town. It got late. We got to Eason Hill. For those of you that don't know, you don't want to be in Eastern Hill after dark. And I said, excuse me, but did you think to bring your service weapon? And she said, no, I figured you did. And I said, no, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't written all of it, but I've written almost all of it. And I've written all of the Chief Ladiga Trail in Alabama. And it's a great ride. And a great thing for Paul McCain to have it right here. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Commissioners, Mr. Pollard, others, I am here this morning to say thank you to, uh, to all of you. You must have known that for many, many years we have been training people in Paulding County to work in other district attorney's offices for a long time. Prosecuting attorney's counsel uh, pays some of my employees, state employees, but the majority of my employees are county paid. It has been very difficult for me over the last nearly seven years to hire people and see them come and go uh, because we were not able to pay them what the market would so pay them if they went somewhere else. Very recently, we had a survey done by the, prosecuting, by the District Attorneys Association and the Prosecuting Attorneys Council uh, on starting pay for ADAs in the state of Georgia, brand new, right out of law school, fresh hire assistant DAs. And we were asked to tell the chairman of the Prosecuting Attorneys Council what our starting pay was. And I submitted that our starting pay was $40,000 a year. Um, after about two weeks, we got a, an email from the chairman saying that the range was from 58000 brand new, to 40000 and I felt pretty bad because that meant we were at the bottom of the barrel. Now, I know that if you give me $40,000 to buy a car, I can go out and buy an adequate motor vehicle. But if you give me $53,000, I can buy a better car. Everybody knows that. We tried to make up for the lack of pay by making my office a convivial, convenient place to work. Uh, we do everything we can to make the employees happy. But we've lost quite a few. Mark Robinson came to us from Georgia State School of Law as an intern. He actually tried jury trials before he passed the bar, but as soon as he passed it, I gave him a job. Paid him $40,000 a year. I asked him for a two-year commitment. He couldn't make it. His wife had another baby. He said, I cannot go. I cannot survive on this. And I said, I understand. And he went to work for it in private practice. Tony Norton came to us from Mercy University, great prosecutor, fresh out of law school. He said, what can you pay me? I said, 40000 He said, that's what I figured, but I understand this is a good place to work. He stayed for a little over three years, and he went to Cobb County as a misdemeanor prosecutor because they could pay $10,000 more dollars a year. Peggy Ramey was a victim witness advocate that lives here, and now, after working in my office, went to the Cab County. Even though it takes her over an hour to get there every day and get back, it's worth it to her because they pay her more money to work at the Cab County. Lexi Markova did exactly the same thing. She left here to work somewhere else. I was hobbled because I could not hire the best or even the, the better candidates. I want to thank you for recognizing and addressing our needs. And I want to tell you about two different things. My jewel prosecutor's a young lady named Alex Clark. She also came to us right out of law school. She's great at what she does. She's been here over two years. She loves prosecuting in juvenile court. Judge Miller loves her, which to me makes a big difference. And when I told her that she was going to get an increase in salary, she said, well, that's great news. My husband has been after me to quit 
and get a job that pays more money, which obviously she could have done. She said, I told him I like working here and I didn't want to do that. And I was going to take another job doing something else on the side so I could keep working here. She told me, she said, now with this increase in salary, I won't have to do that. She's very happy to be able to stay with me. The other instance are two young ladies. Casey, Sarah, stand up. Where's Sarah? They're going to get their ball results on Friday about 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> they thought they were going to get a job paying 40000 a year. They're very happy to know that it will be a better pay. And I'm very happy to know that it will be better because they have done excellent work as interns in the office and I am seriously looking forward to hiring them and keeping them. My office will now be able to better serve the people of Palm Beach County because continuity and quality will help our citizens and the victims in Palm Beach County. So for all of us, the assistant DAs, the administrative assistants, our investigators, and our victim witness advocates, and most especially for me, we are all grateful for your understanding for your understanding and in addressing our needs. All my people, would y'all stand up? Police car driven by the man living next door. I have a lot of experience on my car. I'm going to have to soup up my golf cart. <laughs> we are extremely happy to have all of the people from the DA's office here today, and your contribution to the county are immeasurable. And so appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. May we be excused. We got work to do. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you. The Board of Commissioners would like to present the Public Safety Appreciation Award to Operations Section Manager Felicia Mitchell with 911, with E911, for a dedicated service to the community. Tell us some more about Ms. Mitchell, David. Gary, go front. Hi, everybody. I could tell you about her, but I'll stick to what I've got known to. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be able to present this to Felicia. Uh, she's our operations section manager. Uh, she began her employment in 2003, left briefly, came back. Uh, 2011, she became a supervisor, and then in 2016, she was promoted to operations section manager. Her position in the 9-1 center is that she actually is over the operations, so she handles the day-to-day -day operations, and there were supervisors of each shift report to her. So that's what that's what her job is. She has a very very big responsibility. Um, she, uh, she's a member of the tactical dispatch team. And she's uh, uh, involved with the 9 for Kids program. And uh, since she assumed the position of operations section manager, she's uh, really adapted to and, and, uh, and learned her new duties. She was pretty instrumental in us moving into the 9-1 center too. So she helped us with that, which was a big, uh, a, a big burden on everybody. And she helped alleviate some of that off of, the, uh, off of myself and, and the deputy director. Uh, she's had a, a big, huge growth as a leader within the agency. So she takes on uh, any assignment that she's given. Uh, she's um, really focuses her attention on her staff to make sure that they have what they need. She's uh, uh, worked really hard, diligently to improve communication between <clears throat> the operation side and the admin side. And there's sometimes that gap between the folks who do the job and those of us who sit back and try to tell them how to do the job, even though we don't do it every day. Felicia's well, helped kind of fill that gap in and she's, she's closed that communication gap between them. Uh, she, she used to do that job. Uh, she grew up in that job. So, and so she's, she's very good at that. She listens to her staff's ideas, their complaints, and, and what they need, and then she takes action on that. 
to the ground. So as a result of that, the morale on our ships, we've seen uh, a group, some great improvement uh, since she's taken over as, as the section manager. She, uh, she provides guidance and direction, and she doesn't micromanage, and people that know me know that I don't like micromanagers. So, uh, I tend to promote people who don't do that. And, uh, um, she, she's, she updates out of date procedures. She comes up with new ones if procedures are needed. I mean, she's just a, a well, well-rounded employee. So, uh, she's a dedicated employee. She leads by example. She's always the first to jump in to get help done. I come in on the weekends and she may be in there working a console so that somebody can have a day off or a staff sh uh, shortage or if somebody needs to go take a lunch break or take a break, she's in there working instead of in her office. So she helps out her employees make sure they have what they need to do. So uh, it's not uncommon to find her working in one of those positions. So I would like to, uh, and every now and again she gets picked on me by me at work. So she's very, <laughs> very, very, we have a lot. Okay. Very well rounded. She does her job very well, even when she has to deal with the with the director and all that. <laughs> so if you will join me in congratulating Felicia, she does an excellent job. Public Safety Appreciation Award. This award is presented to Felicia Mitchell in recognition of the outstanding service her community is presented by the board commission. Is your mom here? get here this morning as happens most every meeting um, we have something from our elections director of encouragement uh, Ms. Peter Holden and I don't I think she probably talked to my wife because she gave all of us a rock and mine says patience which means that's what I need so thank you Deidre and uh, also a uh, verse from Isaiah thank you for that and she's going to make an announcement um I just kind of stepped out hoping I'll let you speak this morning I want to invite not only the commissioners and Lonnie and all of you, but I want to invite the public. Um, Holly County was chosen a couple of weeks ago to um, kind of showcase what the future of voting is going to be. Um, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen you know, next year. We're looking at probably a three to five year um, period. But um, I'm inviting you to come Wednesday, uh, no, sorry, Thursday of this week. To the cafeteria we're going to have what the new voting system will look like so i encourage you to come see that it's actually a system that will print out your receipt you can look at it and put it into a machine and it's tabulated automatically so i'm excited i'm excited they chose us to um, be a part of this so if you're interested in this please come see us at 10 a.m on thursday thank you The agenda says we don't have any invited guests, but uh, I have to. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, I sure did. Thank you, Ryan. I uh, have to overlook our, uh, one of my favorites, Parks and Recreation. And uh, it's good to have Michael Justice here to give us an update on the new park. Thank you. Before I do that, I'd like to uh, make a request that you put Chief Belfry in time out for just a few minutes. He's harassing me a little bit this morning. <laughs> I'll make a motion. Thank you very much. Uh, one thing before we do get to the, the new park stuff, I'd like to invite you all out uh, this coming Saturday. Earl Duncan Park at Pauling Meadows. It's, we lose and count. It's either the 20th or the 21st annual Trick or Trick Village that we do for the kids every year. Um, it takes a ton of people, a lot of county staff, and even more volunteers to pull that off. So I'm going to thank them in advance. But 2 to 7 this Saturday at um, Earl Duncan Park. Come out, that'd be great. We're going to open a new park for you uh, in the western portion of the county. It's finally here. Um, November the 14th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 
going through the ribbon cutting there. Now be mindful uh, that there's still a little bit of activity there, uh, not much. You know, there's still some growing in time. There's some punch items and some, um, as my mother would say, some piddly things that, that we need to do to, to finish it up. A couple of things to note, you know, this is phase one of this project. Uh, you'll still see some things there that look like they don't belong for a little while. And one of those is two great big piles of dirt. Uh, that, that's there for a reason. If you can remember back when we started the project, there was a pond and a small lake that was proposed there. That's the damn dirt. Um, that's the dirt that we used for the dam. Um, we, during the process, we were permitted to, uh, to construct the pond, um, but we were not allowed to build the dam. Makes perfect sense to me. Um, so anyway, that's what that's there for. We have to show a need for irrigation, and that's what we'll do with the, with the water that's there. We had to prove that to them before they'll give us the permit, so we'll begin work on that as soon as we open the park on the 14th. So that'll be the next thing on the agenda for us there. Again, uh, Mulberry Rock Park, November 14th uh, at, at 4 o'clock after you guys finish up with the 2 o'clock business. Um, it's located adjacent to Scoggins Middle School there on Mulberry Rock Road. So if you can come join us there, we'd love to see you. Thanks for your help in getting that project done and your patience as well. Look forward to that, Michael. Thanks yes, for your work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful park. For those of y'all that most of you probably haven't went out there because it's under construction, but it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, walking trails and playgrounds are really neat. Uh, I'm probably too old and too big to get on the playground, but yes. <laughs> it's really a neat playground. Uh, the facilities are wonderful, and uh, looking forward to that folks out there deserve that. It's been a long time coming and I appreciate your work. Yes, sir. And uh, just it's a beautiful facility. Thank you. Looking forward to that. And I know that once we open it, we have other things we're going to be doing. And of course, the grass planting and different things. We, we, it's coming along, but there'll be more that needs to happen through the fall and next spring. And uh, that's all planned out. But you guys come out there on that day and uh, it'll, it'll be another kind of like a wide open park. That's great. And, uh, it is passive in nature. There's, there's um, three miles of trails out there now. Uh, some of those are paved. Uh, some of them are not. They run all the way around the park and through the park with several different distance options for you. Um, plenty of pavilions, open air, and uh, there's one enclosed pavilion as well. And you mentioned the playgrounds. Community gardens are an aspect of that that we'll be continuing to work on as well. Ask me the budget question. Yeah, this is a pre planned thing. So, how are we, Michael? We're in good shape. We're, we're going to finish that one under budget. We, um, we had a meeting a few a couple weeks ago, Michael, and we were talking about a couple other things to finish it up. And he looked at me and said, no, if I'm, I'm one dollar under budget, is that under budget? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, okay, we're going to be under budget. <laughs> we're in good shape. We, we've got some funds that we're holding as, as you go out there. Some of the areas are sodding. It's, it's 100 acres of disturbed area, 160 acres that we have. So it's been seeded several times. Obviously with the change of seasons now, between cool and warm season grasses, we're going to have some bare spots where it just doesn't come in, you know, right now. Uh, but we're holding some money where we can come back in the spring when the weather changes and treat those areas again. And, and just a little growing time and a little patience. It'll, it'll be beautiful out there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On the agenda, we don't have any uh, invited guests, but uh, I see some guests that are, are very um, important to our our county. And uh, I'd like to recognize Mark Lethbridge from Brown and Cole. Uh, he used to keep us on track and steering our uh, Richland Creek Reservoir. I'd like to recognize Pastor Cord Franklin, who comes and prays for us sometimes. He's the pastor of Mountain Oliver Church. And, uh, Nancy Hollingshed here. She is the chairperson, chairwoman uh, of our Republican Party in uh, Pauline County. It's always good to have her. And, and uh, I, I make this last one uh, just because I'm touched by what he's done, and he would never tell anybody, but uh, it's a Colonel Chad Hunting, correct? And, Maybe uh, the sheriff would want to tell us any more. Um, 
I believe the adoption of the, the two autistic children has already taken place. <laughs> we, we, uh, I have an autistic son already, sir. Uh, we took in another uh, autistic child. So just one. So you adopted one more? In, in yes, sir. I got, I got guardianship. Okay. He's uh, 16 years old. His name's Eli. Uh, he's a good young man. And uh, he's, uh, he's going to live with us. That's awesome, too. So there are no debt awards, uh, there are no reports from committees and departments um, under public participation on agenda items. No one uh, has signed up. Uh, on the consent agenda, there's eight. So bear with me. Number one, uh, to adopt the revised organizational chart. Number two, to adopt the revised job description for county administrator. Number three, to adopt the revised job description for the director of operations. Number four, authorize the chairman to enter into a lease agreement with the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia for the use of Georgia Highlands College for the space located on the third floor of the courthouse. Number five is action to approve the boundary line agreement between Candy Hilton Rollins and Charles McCoy Rollins as co-trustees of the Charles McCoy Rollins Trust in Paulding County, Georgia for, uh, for a property located within Land lot nine of the second district, third section of Pauline County, Georgia. Number six is the sheriff's also would like to retire as surplus lieutenant Mike Christopher's service weapon, Glock model 21 Sierra Fox Trot, serial number TYN6589, and present the pistol to Lieutenant Mike Christopher upon his retirement as a symbol of our appreciation for 19 years of service and dedication to the citizens of Pauline County. Number seven is the acceptance of uh, street, A Street for perpetual maintenance, which is uh, at Lost Creek in uh, Unit A Phase 1, Lost Creek Club Drive. And number eight is to clear uh, a couple of items listed as surplus and approve their disposal through auction and trade. Uh, both are in the uh, DOT department, both are thermoplastic hardliners, and uh, one is the make and model ASE Thermo Mark II, and the um, serial number is 2001067, and the second thermoplastic card liner is ASC Thermo Mark II, serial number 2001334. So I would ask if any of the commissioners would like to move any of these items to uh, regular business or new business. Hearing no request for that, uh, we'll stay on the consent agenda and we'll move into old business. Number one is discuss action to approve the chairman's nomination of Frank Baker to the position of county administrator. This is tabled from the September 21st, 2017 meeting and the October 10th, 2017 Board of Commissioners meetings. So, the, uh, the Board of Commissioners has uh, worked together and collaborated um, for restructuring uh, of our entire um, table of organization, which is one of the consent items you just heard. Uh, and that's one of the things that, that we wanted to get in line, uh, not get the cart before the horse, horse, so to speak. And so we had delayed uh, this old business item for a good reason. And uh, we think that the new organizational charter will be uh, that the uh, county administrator will have uh, have oversight of will be much more effective and efficient. Any other comments on this from our commissioner and our board? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Under new business. Discuss an action to authorize the chairman to execute a supplemental agreement in the amount of $572,050.56 for the uh, fiscal year 2017 Asphalt One contract that was previously awarded on June the 27th, 2017 to Baldwin Paving Company Incorporated in the amount of $3,636,461.27. The agreement extends the resurfacing of Seven Hills Boulevard by 1.75 miles 
to the bridge over Little Pumpkin Vine Creek. And Mr. Green is going to answer questions and give us any other information. Thanks, Scott. Great, thank you. Um, since this is a fairly large increase in this contract, I want to give you a little background on it. Uh, as you know, Seven Hills Boulevard is a very long road. It's about three miles extended from Ivy Gulch to Cedar Crest. And uh, the current contract only pays the two lane uh, double yellow section on the south half mile near Ivy Gulch. Um, we had hoped that the road would hold up. Um, the middle parts that we were talking about with this extension until we were able to widen Seven Hills and that contract is still under design. It's uh, a little bit delayed. That is uh, from Little Pumpkin Vine Creek Bridge up to Cedar Crest. And that will be a major reconstruction project in a roundabout. Um, we thought we could include this middle section, or gap, I should say, with that future project. But look at the condition here lately with uh, traffic uh, in and around the transfer station and some of the deterioration. We thought we should approach the contractor and see if we could go ahead and extend the contract and honor their original prices, and they have. Um, they've also, also negotiated the milling price downward, so we're actually getting a little bit cheaper than if we had used the original items. Um, with the condition and, and uh, a little bit of a date uncertain on the future widening, we think we should go ahead and take care of it at this time. We do have funding available in general fund for paving, so this won't be an overall apartment loan increase. Um, be glad to answer any questions. That's good. Great, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. New business item number two. Discuss action to adopt resolution 17-33, which is a, a resolution providing for, one, the approval, execution, and delivery of a bond purchase agreement, providing for the sale of the anticipated amount of $72 million, with the final number to be set on the uh, with the bond terms on October the 24th, 2017 today, uh, in Pauling County General Obligation Bond Series 2017. And number two, the naming the authenticating agent, the bond registrar, and paying agent for the said bonds. Uh, and the third part, the adoption of the form of which the said bonds shall adhere. And four, the preparation of a tax digest and the levy of a tax sufficient to pay the principal and interest on the said bonds. The fifth part, the approval, execution, and delivery of a continuing disclosure certificate and official statement relating to the said bonds. Number six, the execution and delivery of said bonds. And number seven, uh, any other related purpose for these general obligation bonds issued for the Pauling County Detention Center Project, our jail. So we have uh, Ms. Skipper here beside me and, and Ms. Pollard and Sheriff Gullich to uh, address any questions or give us any more information. Um. And I apologize for the length of the agenda item. I just put most of the purposes of the bond resolution in the title. So there wasn't any confusion. Um, as the title says, this, this does a couple of things. One is approve the bond purchase agreement, which is essentially approving the issuance of the bonds. They are at market today, which means this evening we will have a bond resolution that will have the final numbers in it. Um, the anticipated amounts, um, Ms. Pollard will go over a few in a few minutes. You recall this was on the general election ballot in November. It was approved by the voters um, to issue these bonds for the purpose of the jail. And so this is the next step to that. We did validate these bonds in April already, so that part has already been done. Um, kind of as it said, it, this sets the agents and the bond registrars, which are the financial institutions that are going to be to dealing with these and adopts the forms of the bond or the actual certificates that will be issued to people that buy them at market. Um, it provides that finance will, will set the millage rate appropriately for these amounts in future budgets. Um, it approves the official statement and some of the other 
disclose certificates that are required for bonds to be sold. And then last but not least, it's going to authorize the chairman to sign all the documents associated with the sale of these bonds, which um, we should do later on this week. That's my part. That's the finance part. <laughs> Um, as Lauren mentioned, the underwriters will be here this afternoon to give you the results of the sale. But what you have in front of you, I think each one of you have the, um, anticipated this is their best guess. It was done about a, a couple of days ago. And they anticipate the coupons to range from 2% to 5%. The true interest cost is just over 3.5% for these bonds. Um, the debt schedule will... Um, We'll begin paying for these in February of 2018. However, we have a little bit of funding available in the, this year we issued a millage rate of 2.07 mills for debt service. And that is enough to be able to um, finance the first year, so the 693,000. And then we will, next year, we will also use that plus any fund balance that we have to be able to pay for 2018, um, all of 2018, so that you don't actually impose an increase to the millage rate until the year after. And the idea is you'll see a building coming out of the ground <coughs> the citizens start to pay for it so they can associate one with the other um, once, <coughs> they start, once that hits the tax bill. So it won't hit in 2018, shouldn't. It will likely be 2019. The debt payment schedule is um, right at four, estimated to be right at four million a year. So that's just under a meal, and you already have a fraction of that that's being imposed. So the increase that the citizen see should be something less than a meal in 2019. But as soon as we get the final numbers, we will send you an email with those, and then that will be on tonight at 7 with the final numbers. The sheriff sporting his hunting beard? Yeah. <laughs> a little explanation for this in our office every year, year in October, November, if we do no shade, November. Uh, it costs $25 a month to do it. If you can't be in uniform, you have to be in class C. This is our training uniform. If you guys go in a regular uniform, you got to shave. We put $25 a month in our fire fund. We're sending out flowers for all the problems we have with dogs. It's, uh, it's a fund that's always needed. Y'all know about EP funds, so we have them too. So <laughs> if uh, anything goes on, we have to go back in uniform. Of course, you lose your money and your beard. So. But I would like to take a few minutes and thank the public. I've heard some, uh, I guess, good and much right word for it that you know, the people should have been allowed to vote for this jail thing, and I'm thinking that's exactly what we've done. You know, I asked it to be put on the presidential ballot. So that it was a time when the most voters in the county came to the polls. Uh, it was put on a presidential ballot. It was approved by the majority of the voters, which I, I really thank them for. It's very much needed. Uh, we're in the planning processes now. It's uh, we're meeting weekly, and some of it's up so far over your head that you realize pretty quick you've got to hire people smarter than you to get this done. I hope we can break ground sometime in the middle of spring, maybe late spring. Uh, they're still saying probably two, two and a half years, so we'll have it completed. Uh, hope we can get it done behind the building. There's a lot of stuff, you know, we run into utilities and it's just, every time you take a step forward, you gotta take two steps back and replan. So we're in the process of trying to do that, but I, I wanna go on record and thank the public for their support of this. Uh, thank them for voting for it and trusting us to do it. I hope that it's, oh, I know Commissioner uh, Crow and Commissioner Finale was on the board with us for picking the people that does this job. We all want the same thing. We want it put out in front. We want to shine a spotlight on it. We want the public's involvement in it. We want people to know what we're doing. We're not hiding and doing anything in the dark. Uh, thank y'all for y'all's time. I know it's y'all got a busy schedule, but I appreciate y'all taking the time to sit on these boards and pick the people that's going to be building this jail. Uh, we're extremely happy. We had a meeting a few weeks ago. We're trying to get as much local participation so that this tax money is returned back into the community and spent back here again. Uh, we, we hope that works out real well. Everybody that's at the meeting seems excited about the project and then it was bid on it. And hopefully get some bids. And even the smaller companies, if you've got a small company and you don't feel like you can do this big of a job, you know, maybe some of these bigger companies, we can get them to use the smaller companies to come in and do the actual work. So 
we're hoping as much money as possible in this project we can get and return it back to the citizens again. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You might as well stay there, stay there and respond to that. Um, the next item is to uh, discuss action authorized the chairman to enter into the lease agreement with Verizon Wireless to locate a cell tower on Bell Road. Occasionally we get the opportunity to use a piece of land and the um, cell tower industry will want to just construct the tower and we'll get rental income and it's really not any upkeep um, to us. So this is one of those, this will be a water system, uh, on water system piece of property where they have a lift station. We have, um, I think it's 130 feet high. There'll be three tenants on there. They're going to, this lease is for $10,000 um, signing bonus and then $1,000 a month. And the water system will be able to use, uh, we will use one of the spaces uh, for our AMI. For the water system billing, so it's a, it's kind of a win-win for us. Any questions? That's good, Lord. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. New business number four, discuss action to adopt resolution 17-34, resolution enacting a moratorium for 90 days on the acceptance of applications for planned residential development, PRD, uh, the zoning category, PRD. So, this was uh, kind of a new item, and I would ask uh, our lead commissioner, uh, post war commissioner, Tony Crook, I didn't mention anything to you earlier, but you're comfortable with mentioning that, or we'll let Ann talk about it. I'm good with it, and I turn it over to Ann any time I get to do It's something that's needed to be done here in the county for some time. Uh, PRDs were uh, 98, is that when all this came about? And since then, they have not been corrected at any time. Uh, changes need to be made. And, we, and I have recommended we do a moratorium at this time to readjust things. Uh, and I talked to some of the other commissioners, and they're on board with it. It's something that's much needed here in the county at this time. So, and if you want to speak on it, I'm, I'm good with it. She's going to be having it. Yeah, I'll just say that um, we'll take these 90 days. They were not accepting any applications for PRD zoning, rezoning um, to make changes to that district. We're just stepping back and taking a breath and looking. And if we need to add another 90 days, if we don't get it done in this first 90 days, we'll, we'll add another 90 days to it. And Ms. Skipper has some uh, background in continuity history that I, you don't have to say if you don't want to. Well, I mean, I was just going to kind of give you an update of what, what's in the resolution. It's a very short resolution. It um, indicates that the planning staff will be looking at the PRD ordinance um, and looking to do some changes to it, to the ordinance and any related development regulations that may be done. It is a 90-day moratorium on the acceptance of applications for rezoning to PRD. Um, so it wouldn't affect um, anything that is already submitted. It would affect things after the period. We can extend it after the original 90 days, but in order for a moratorium um, to work, you need to put the purpose of it and a time frame, and we thought that 90 days initially was appropriate. Any other questions, comments? You good with the 90 days? Guess you got to get busy. <laughs> and new business item number five discuss action to approve the chairman's nomination of Scott Green to the director of operations position um, Scott has been with the county for uh, 13 years and was with the state prior to that actually moved here uh, transplant from California and he saw the light when he got here uh, lived with his aunt and uncle in Powder Springs and went to Southern Tech where he achieved a degree in civil engineering. Uh, I actually met Scott uh, shortly thereafter uh, working on the uh, Dallas Bypass out here going to Rock Park in a, a typical DOT trailer there on, off Mount Olivet Road. This young whippersnapper, this new, newly graduate walked in and uh, 
it didn't take uh, long for me to understand how well qualified he was with his uh, ability to survey and, and plan and, and uh, just really put things on paper. Um, it's been a pleasure, let me say, to, uh, to work with the board to um, kind of redevelop. Uh, there was a position called Government Services three years ago. Uh, redevelop this position uh, uh, at oversight over some of our departments, but uh, I know, and the board will speak up also, but uh, it's, it's not so much oversight as it is an enhancement to the uh, ability uh, to support our departments at a higher level so that they'll be better represented. And if our departments are better represented um, in our overall teamwork framework, then obviously the citizens are going to be better represented in what we get done. Um, <clears throat> Scott does have his uh, PE. He's registered back in uh, 1998. So he's got uh, 27 total years of engineering experience. And uh, again, a lot of continuity background and um, just knowledge about what's going on in Paulding County. He, um, this position will be used for a lot of special projects and not just work with the departments, but with his continuity and background, um, I've already identified eight plus projects that I would like to see uh, take off in the next few months. So that's an, an extra thing that he'll carry. Uh, lastly, he, uh, he met his wife at Russell Street Baptist Church. They've been married for 29 years and had two sons and a daughter. And I found him to be one of the most responsive people that I've ever worked with. I'll speak up. I'll speak up also. Chairman Carmichael says it's been one of the most pleasurable things we've worked on, and without a doubt, that's the truth. All this ties in together with the new organizational flow chart. Mr. Baker coming on board and Scott moving up and it's just amazing the amount of work we've accomplished and gotten done during our executive session and, and everybody being just in step together and everybody just in agreement with this and we just kept tweaking it and tweaking it until it just came out the way it is and we are all feel really good about it think it's going to be the best thing for the county and we're ready to move on. You know, there's a saying, uh, it's amazing what you can get done when nobody cares who gets the credit. And uh, I've enjoyed the last, maybe not enjoyed, let's say executive sessions go along sometimes. I've, um, but it's been a real pleasure to, uh, to work with you guys on this. I'm excited about um, kind of this direction. I know Dave, you've been asking for help for a while and, and, um, and there's been a lot of back and forth on that. I think we've, I, th I think we've got it right and uh, I'm looking forward to um, this move on. And I was glad you dumped the old truck on the road. He had it there. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's gonna be good. I think, uh, you know, not everybody agrees on everything 100%. That's just the way it is. And I always say that, you know, you get home at the dinner table, not everything's agreed upon at the dinner table either as a family you move forward from the dinner table and do what you need to do and I feel like um, uh, with the new positions that we have um, I hope it's an enhancement for the department heads and I hope it's an enhancement to see to get projects done and things maybe that have fallen by the wayside and not gotten done so um, I know the chairman says he's got a list of eight I think that's a little shy uh, I think there's quite a few things I'm joking about, but I think there's quite a few things that we've talked about a lot. So hopefully, uh, Scott and Frank together will be able to take the bull by the horns and get some things done. And uh, uh, these 90 day projects we can get done quick and, and move through and do what we need to do. But um, we look at it as uh, you know, there's all kind of personalities out there, but I look at it as an enhancement try to get things done and it's not about somebody being in charge over somebody a good leader a um, good department head leader doesn't have to to be the boss they just need to do what's right and lead and before you know it you'll have people follow 
I think that's what it is with a father and a, with a family, and I think that's what it is with leadership in a church, and I think that's what it is with leadership at work. And so, uh, I hope that uh, I hope that these two positions will, uh, even though we may not all agree on everything, that they'll lead us in a positive direction, and everything will be done out front, and that everybody, all the department heads, will know. Uh, no matter who you so-called report to, that you can go to either one of these men, and you can go to any commissioner and uh, talk to talk to them and see that we get things done and on the right track, whatever that is. So I expect Scott and Frank to work together hard. Uh, and we've got a lot to get done, so uh, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. But as far as the processes processes is going, uh, I think it's been a class act. Uh, what we've been able to get done. Really, I know it's been talked about since the first of the year, but there's been a lot of changes, and, and here we are at this. I, I think the process has been great. And it's been real refreshing. So. And I, I might add one thing. I like to thank Brian Hacker, because he, he sure helped us a lot during that process. And he came through, Brian. Appreciate it. All right. A um, couple of alibi rounds up. You know, to call them, uh, I, you always, when you uh, introduce people or you recognize people, you leave somebody out. Uh, Pastor Johnny McBurr is back. He probably does as much for Pauline County as uh, anybody I've ever known. So, Johnny, it's great to have you here. Uh, and uh, I'd like to call Miss Skipper to make an announcement about a public hearing. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, we do have the Planning Commission, and the last item on that agenda is the public hearing for changes to the sign ordinance. Um, drafts of that have gone out. It is not on your agenda this evening for adoption, because the idea was that we were going to take the public comment at 2 o'clock. We would get that input. We would get some more input from the commissioners, and it will be on your agenda in two weeks for adoption in its final version. So we were hoping that today we might get some more comment that we could use in the ordinance itself. Well that's the conclusion of our regular business uh, in under an hour. Good job. And we do have an executive session requirement for real estate uh, personnel pending and potential litigation and uh, we'll decide on that order out in the hallway here. Uh, we have no public participation today on, on non-agenda items. So at this point, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, I turn two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make a motion to be uh, going to executive session for real estate personnel and pending and potential litigation. Second. Motion and second. Uh, and then we will do executive session. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned executive session. So uh, we are back in regular session, uh, but we want to make a motion uh, to complete uh, some of the agenda that we haven't finished yet. So to hear a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we take a recess from executive session and go back to executive session after planning is on. And I'll make a second to that. I have a motion and a second to recess from executive session and then return after the uh, planning and zoning meeting. So we do not interrupt that schedule. Is there uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And recess for executive session. Adjourn to take two. I make a motion that we uh, adjourn back to executive session. Second. Go back into executive session. Second. Motion is a second to return to executive session. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Adjourn to the technical session. All right, we'll uh, call the uh, regular session uh, back to order. And uh, during the executive session, there was no action taken. Uh, and uh, we do have a motion that will be presented. So present the motion, please. Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we authorize Smith Connerly, LLP, to send a notice letter to the PCAA, Paulding County Airport Authority, and to be able to take all necessary steps to protect the county's interest 
as it relates to the proposed cutting of timber at the Paulton County Airport. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. We have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. No, that's our 7 p.m. Yes. This is just, a motion to add. just to clarify. Yeah, motion to add to, add yeah. to the agenda. 7 p.m. And um, it, can you read the end of that again, please? Or just read the whole thing again. Motion to authorize Smith Connerly, LLP, to send a notice letter to the Paulding County Airport Authority and to take all necessary steps to protect the county's interest as it relates to the proposed cutting of timber at the Paulding County Airport. Okay. And we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, discussion? Yeah. It's already called for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Any other discussion? I just, uh, just want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that the citizen's interest at the airport is protected and that our environment is protected for today, tomorrow, for, for us, for our kids, our grandkids, and in the future. I want to make sure that we're doing what needs to be done. Any other comments? Okay. Um, take a vote in. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries 5-0. Any additional? Yes. Um, I would like to. Um, make a motion that we add to the consent agenda a call planning commission meeting for next month to be held on November 28th at 2 p.m. and um, the reason for that is because we had some signage that was had some errors in the signage and then we had four of our um, four of our citizens that were not able to be heard today because of the air in the signage and it was our mistake and so I uh, want to have a uh, call meeting on November 28th at 2 p.m. We have a motion to, to have a call meeting of the... It's, it's a motion to add that to the consent yeah. agenda so you'll actually it, it'll be within the consent agenda it'll be voted on tonight Right, so a motion to have uh, what Commissioner Pownell said on the agenda for tonight. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Crow. Uh, any only further discussion? Only question I'll ask is that include all of the advertisement necessary or does that need to be Yes, it'll, it'll. It'll, um, what will happen is they will advertise for that meeting in the paper for the four weeks that's required. There's enough time to do that. Okay. Um, so it would be all the applications that are currently pending. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to have that on the agenda for tonight. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries 5-0. Is there any additional uh, motions or consideration for the voting session tonight? No, thank you. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. Is there a second? Same. Have a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, We'll reconvene, call the night meeting uh, to order at 7 o'clock, and uh, we are adjourned. Good night.